I'm going to remove the wiring now and basically anything electrical in the car. So I'll just take out the grill uh, so I can get easier access to the lights. There's just three screws that hold them on. One goes in from the back. While I'm there, I'll disconnect the bulbs. That's the dip and main beam, and that's the parking lights. Indicator. That has to come out first. And then you get access to the two screws that go in from the front. This is an area of these Opel Cadet Ds that often rusts, so I'm delighted to find this car is solid in this area. When you're taking the lights out, the adjusters snag, so you just have to give them a little lift. There's a little earth here for this branch of the loom, and once that's disconnected, I can peel it back from here. That's the fan motor on these left-hand drive cars. I'm going to remove the, the whole box while I'm here. There's a number of nuts and screws on this. That's all of them removed. I wasn't sure if there was something going in from behind. Um, this is the splash cover for the intake for the fan so that water doesn't get blown into the interior from the scuttle area. It's a little bit tricky that. And very delicate. Anyway, it's come out in one piece. So I need to lever this off. It's actually sealed against the bulkhead. That's supposed to make sure that no fumes from the engine bay uh, enter the cabin. Might have been better to take the, the washer bottle off first. But anyway, still have that lever to hand and I'll just take off the, the outlet pipe there. And that's the connector for the, the washer motor. Yeah, that's the seal for the back of the, the bonnet when it's down. Again, separating that area from the, the engine bay. So it's just a, a screw on either side of the washer bottle. Then there's two wires going to the brake fluid reservoir on the master cylinder and then I'll move on to the wiper motor so I just disconnect that from the arms there's just one nut again that tapers into place so it uh, needs a lever to get it off it's a nicer installation on the left hand drive cars uh, the wiper motor is actually inside that scuttle panel and the base of it sits often in water and can get very rusty. These are a couple of the things that um, make me glad I'm building one of these cars in their, their true original design form. The main reason being the location of that brake master cylinder, that it's straight behind your foot and not um, got the brake effort translated across the car with a cable, which it is in the right hand drive cars. I'll just put a bit of uh, penetrating oil on those two pipes in and out of the interior radiator and I'll loosen them off later. That's the horn. I just pulled the wires from that. They're a little awkward to get out at the bottom of the engine bay. One of them needed a little bit of persuasion with the pliers. The reverse light was much more compliant. I'll start disentangling this uh, so I can feed it back through the single hole that it comes through from the 
interior fuse box is just behind that poke it through and just feed it stage by stage and try not to pull it too tight when those connector blocks are snagging trying to push the smaller ones through and then that makes space for the bigger ones so I alternated between pushing it through and and pulling it from the inside section by section that's the main power lead that goes to the start motor and then up to the alternator from the battery I'm being patient not to damage this loom because I do intend to use it again especially now that it's proven itself that's the last little bit through there now I'm ready to tackle those clips on the radiator hoses now one of them's an original uh, type that has two bars around it and the head just sheared straight off it that's why I never tend to reuse those Jubilee clip like this one, much more reliable. Okay, back inside, take those two bits of ducting off the heater matrix, undo two screws that hold it in and then it just pries off it's sealed as well and it needs a little lift up it kind of hooks itself over a lip on the the gap through the bulkhead one thing I left behind is the coil disconnect that now Round to the boot to take the rear section of the wiring loom out. Very handy um, for changing bulbs, that little cluster. Just clips open and then three screws remove each of the lights. Mind the seal, I'd like to use that again. Same job with the other one. just disconnect a plug from the bulb cluster there and there's an earth at each side just like that branch down to the front right hand headlight at the other end of the car the number plate light holds it there in the middle and there's a, a little grommet that's a bit awkward to do with the, the bumper still in place Got one edge through already, and just use a screwdriver to to poke the bottom, and then that'll feed back through. And with the earth removed at this side, I can pull out all the rest of the the wiring. And then it shoves up into this area of the quarter panel get all the ends in past I should just be able to pull it all through yeah all in one go now that's the fuel sender wire so I had to jack the car support it and use a screwdriver to get that one started it's the earth it's a little bit corroded and that's the one that sends the current to the fuel gauge 
Then there's the switch for the interior light that comes on when you open the doors. Let's disconnect that. And it's fed right through the A pillar up to the light. Let's pull that out and then the wire comes out all the way. I'm going to have fun feeding that back in. But this is going to be a competition car so I won't have a headlining. Makes it a bit easier. And as uh, you saw that the, the other side was, wasn't actually connected. So I just pulled all that out. There's one last earth here beside the steering column and that's released the whole thing now. Except that brake pedal switch. At least when I'm fitting all this the next time, I'll know it all worked when I took it out. Because when I fitted this, it was totally a random uh, wiring loop.